guest today is Mr. Gregory Dunn. He is the president and CEO of Better Business Bureau here in Hawaii. Welcome, Greg. Um, Thank you. Good to have you on the show. So Thrilled to be here. Wonderful. So to begin, um, tell us a little bit about Better Business Bureau, um, how long it's been in Hawaii, and I'll let you start with that. Well, thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, first, I want to say congratulations to Reg because mm -hmm. he's done some remarkable things for small business in the state of Hawaii, and he really deserves the award that he's he's receiving today. Um, Hawaii's Better Business Bureau has mm -hmm. been in Hawaii since 1944. Uh, we were founded as a project of the Chamber of Commerce of Hawaii as a way to try and put a, a stop to carpetbaggers that were coming into the community and and making false advertising claims and promises to uh, community members. Mm -hmm. So we're set up to protect people. Oh, wow. So since 19, 1944, you said, um, yeah. because earlier on when we were chatting about the show, I told you that um, I lived in Canada for a while, and um, first time I heard about Better Business Bureau was, okay, if you have an issue, you got scammed, you talk to them. But I had a chance to look at your website, which has a lot of great information. But um, Obviously, you're doing much more than just looking at scams and all that. So maybe you can tell us a little bit more about the structure of the organization, how many members you have. Sure. Uh, if we look at uh, Hawaii's BBB, um, we uh, have around 2,600 members, 2,541 members right now. Uh, they're spread out across the state, uh, and they're anywhere from small business to large business and those members are accredited businesses mm -hmm. and so businesses apply for accreditation to support the work of the BBB mm -hmm. and those businesses vow to support and uphold certain standards consumers recognize those standards and say that this business is exhibiting the accredited business seal so I know I can trust them I know that if I have a problem that they're going to work with me through a dispute resolution process. I know that I can count on that business to be trustworthy and, and to be honest in their in their dealings and their representations and in their, in their advertising. Mm -hmm. So the BBB in Hawaii has been built around those tenants mm -hmm. and our membership is very strong and committed to upholding those. So you said that these businesses to join you as a member, they have to fulfill certain criteria. So how stringent are they and how do you, how do you go and I guess audit these criteria? The criteria are fairly stringent. Uh, if we look at number seven, there, um, you're, you're going to see seven or eight ways that businesses have to fulfill those, mm -hmm. um, those uh, standards. Mm -hmm. And we expel members all the time who are not living up to the standards. If a business has said in their agreement as an accredited business that we promise to engage with a consumer in dispute resolution, but they, they fail to respond to a consumer concern, those people will have their accreditation revoked and we will end their membership and they'll no longer be able to claim that they're an accredited business. Mm. So uh, within the last year we've had eight revocations in the state of Hawaii that I can recall. Oh, so how does it compare to the uh, other Better Business Bureau uh, across the country, uh, I guess the, uh, revoking members? The revocation number is, is fairly standard across mm -hmm. most BBBs. Mm -hmm. uh, we find that when a business makes the commitment mm -hmm. that they follow up on it. Mm -hmm. uh, so it gives consumers a continued high degree of trust mm -hmm. because we have a good reputation, we do a good amount of vetting on the front end, mm -hmm. uh, where when a business applies for accreditation, mm -hmm. we review their professional licensing and make sure that they don't have a criminal record or a problem with uh, lawsuits at the state. Um, in particular with, with consumer related transactions or even business to business uh, lawsuits that may cause concern. Uh, we look at their complaint history, we look at, at customer concerns, mm -hmm. uh, other review sites that mm -hmm. where people have comments about. Ultimately we want to make sure that is that business a business that we want to have associated with the Better Business Bureau. Mm -hmm. It's not just about the money, it's not just about growing the number of members. It's about having the right members as a part of your organization that best represent the mission of the organization. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you brought that up, but before I ask you more questions about you know, the benefits to members, remind me again, so how many members do you have across the state? And 
well, across the state right now, around 2,500. Oh, and wow. they're split out across all the islands. Mm -hmm. So we have members on the island of Lanai and uh, Big Island, Maui, Maui County, mm -hmm. Kauai. You know, the majority are on Oahu. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, we have the largest business census mm -hmm. on Oahu. Mm -hmm. But in the most recent business census, we have around 33,000 total businesses in the state of Hawaii. And we have approximately 8% of those businesses are accredited businesses that support the work of Hawaii's Better Business Bureau. Mm -hmm. uh, we're a nonprofit organization mm -hmm. and we rely on the support of our members mm -hmm. and the donations of others to continue the work that we do for the community. Oh, okay. So, yeah, you, so you talk about um, your organization being a membership driven organization. You also have nonprofits. So, how does it help you accomplish your mission then of BBB? Well, the BPB's overall mission is to build a community of trustworthy businesses. Mm -hmm. And so the 501c6 BBB membership organization, mm -hmm. Better Business Bureau of Hawaii, focuses on developing the website, providing web content, information, uh, developing our membership so mm -hmm. that they can be better businesses. We've uh, recently developed a suite of web products and mobile products that our businesses are able to deploy as a benefit of their accreditation mm -hmm. to help them be better with consumers. We also have a 501c3 nonprofit mm -hmm. foundation. Mm -hmm. That nonprofit foundation allows us to receive charitable contributions that are tax deductible mm -hmm. that help us to do more community-based messaging mm -hmm. on fraud prevention mm -hmm. and helping the people to avoid being taken advantage of by scams. Uh, we also work with the military community, mm -hmm. and that supports our military line efforts mm -hmm. in helping service members and their families to better transition when they move to Hawaii and mm -hmm. also help them to avoid being taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. Because we find nationally that service members are, are high risk population for being taken advantage of because many of them are moving to new communities where they don't know a lot of people mm -hmm. and um, the, the scam artists take full advantage of them and try and get the money out of them as quick as possible. So other BBBs across the country, they also provide service to a lot of military uh, service members then. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. um, Based on what you just said, there are so many questions in my head, but maybe let's go back to um, membership. You said that most mm -hmm. of your members are here on Oahu, mm -hmm. so I'm just curious, um, since we have members across the state and different islands, how do you service them as well? Do you travel a lot to go meet with them? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, for example, uh, one of the projects that we've been working on for the last two years mm -hmm. is a collaboration with the Lanai Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. So with the closure of the two hotels after Mil Mr. Ellison had, mm -hmm. had purchased uh, the majority of the island and renovating the properties, we worked with the Lanai Chamber of Commerce to provide tools for their members and our accredited members on the island to help consumers understand that the island was still open for business mm -hmm. and we were able to set up a landing page on our website. Uh, we funded it with Google AdWords that our organization helped to contribute. We received a grant from Google that mm -hmm. that uh, allowed us to drive traffic to the wow. landing page and, and help increase the exposure for the neighbor island businesses uh, and we helped them to come up with a, a way to to ex increase their their number of day visitors in particular oh, so by featuring nice. golf and bringing the ferry over from Maui so it, it was a very interactive process so we do those types of things mm -hmm. in bringing our expertise in and our um, our gravitas mm -hmm. in the online marketplace mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to local businesses mm -hmm. and helping to connect them with consumers in the ways that consumers are now shopping. Uh, people are utilizing mobile devices more and more. Mm -hmm. In fact, 78% of the traffic to Hawaii's BBB website in the last year originated from a mobile device. A oh. consumer looked at either their phone or their tablet to access the information mm -hmm. on Hawaii's BBB. Mm -hmm. So we're able to help uh, our local small business owners and even large businesses mm -hmm. like uh, um, understand the change in consumer behavior, help them adapt to it and utilize the tools that the BBB has. You've touched a lot on technology and how things have changed, how business have to adapt. Um, actually, that's something when I looked at your website, I find it surprising. Surprising in the sense that there's a lot of information about technology. So how has that affected you know, the issues that you may have to deal with at your organization? 
Well, it, it gave us a, a myriad of problems. I mean, from one, over the last four years, we had to internally retool our, our processes. Mm -hmm. We had to retool and train our staff. Mm -hmm. We had to help them understand in a better way um, their engagement points with consumers and businesses needed to be done in a different manner. It wasn't just about people walking in the front door and filling out a complaint form anymore. It was about people wanted a certain type of information and they wanted to receive it in a certain way. Mm -hmm. So we had to develop new channels that met the mm -hmm. current needs of the mm -hmm. of our community. Mm -hmm. um, so for us, we were able to incorporate a new database, we incorporated our new website, mm -hmm. we provided new uh, ways that business owners could leverage their accredited business mm -hmm. profile and take greater advantage of the high ranking of the Better Business Bureau on an international basis mm -hmm. to showcase themselves. Oh, that's great. But now you're talking about uh, making it easier for, say, consumer to file complaints or um, it, it's really more the process improvement part. But in terms of issues, scam issues mm -hmm. that you mentioned early on, how uh, military personnel may be susceptible to that. How has technology played a role in that area? Well, in some ways, that's a more frightening aspect of technology. Mm -hmm. uh, it used to be a criminal would, would use a crowbar and pry open your window, mm -hmm. or they would show up on your doorstep and mm -hmm. try and con you into buying a, a used vacuum cleaner. Mm -hmm. uh, today, the criminals are invited right into your living room via your computer or your smartphone. Mm -hmm. Or in many cases, you don't even know they've gotten the information through a, a, a Trojan horse or a virus mm -hmm. that they receive from an email that, or uh, via social media, mm -hmm. where they've, they've taken some silly quiz on, on Facebook and they've mm -hmm. given away all of their personal data. Mm -hmm. um, Hawaii's BBB has been very active in providing messaging in the community. In the past year, we've had over 142 million impressions of our nonprofit message of scam and fraud prevention just in our Hawaii marketplace with a publicity value of over $4.2 million wow. that it would have cost us to buy the equivalent advertising space. And that's because it is such a pervasive problem mm -hmm. and our local news media has been very helpful in getting the word out to educate consumers on how to protect themselves. Mm -hmm. So we get the message out, but we still have the live bodies in the office that are able to answer the phones as part of Hawaii's partnership against fraud, mm -hmm. so that if a senior citizen uh, falls victim to a scam or a fraud or is afraid they may, there's a live body for them to reach out and talk to on the other end of the phone. So we still have the, the live person, mm -hmm. the human aspect, mm -hmm. while we're balancing the, the increase in the technology and the distribution of the content. That's really impressive, and I think uh, technology is one issue that I'd like to continue after the break. Uh, we're coming on a break, so um, we'll continue afterwards. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii. We'll be right back after the break. Hi, I'm Carol Cox. I'm the new host of Eyes on Hawaii. Make sure you stay in the know on Hawaii. Join us on Tuesdays at 12 noon. We will see you then. Aloha. Freedom. Is it a feeling? Is it a place? Is it an idea? At Dive Heart, we believe freedom is all of these and more, regardless of your ability. Dive Heart wants to help you escape the bonds of this world and defy gravity. Since 2001, Dive Heart has helped children, adults, and veterans of all abilities go where they have never gone before. Dive Heart has helped them transition to their new normal. Search DiveHeart.org and share our mission with others, and in the process, help people of all abilities imagine the possibilities in their lives. You're watching ThinkTech on ThinkTechHawaii.com, which broadcasts five live talk shows from noon to 5 p.m. every weekday, and then streams our earlier shows all night long. Great content for Hawaii from ThinkTech. Welcome back to Business in Hawaii. My name is Alice Lee Hagen. Today my guest is Gregory Dunn, President and CEO of Better Business Bureau here in Hawaii. Before the break, we were talking about technology and I guess some of the te technology uh, related uh, scam issues. Um, now, you mentioned how you were able, there were a lot of, um, I guess, consumers that came onto your website and I guess the value translated to about 42 million worth of. I guess you have to remind me again. So 42, 142 million uh, impressions okay. of data. Uh -huh. that's, that's where our message goes out and mm -hmm. is, is uh, obtained by different people through various channels. So now I know that 
your organization's mission is really to create or to make sure that businesses who do um, who are here would provide trustworthy kind of business value to consumers. So, when people join or when organizations join, um, what are the benefits for them? Because from my perspective, I say, okay, it's great, BBB is pr protecting consumers here, but mm -hmm. what are the benefits for your members? Well, the biggest benefit mm -hmm. for our members that I see mm -hmm. is that we're helping to protect people from losing all of their money. Mm -hmm. Because if they don't have any money, they're not going to be able to spend it with you. So it, you're, if you're looking for a transactional relationship mm -hmm. where you want a quid pro quo, I want X number of leads in exchange for my, my dollars, you're not going to get it here. Mm -hmm. What you will get is a feeling good about the fact that you're protecting your community and you're protecting your employees. Um, there's a, a little known statistic that if someone falls victim to, uh, to identity theft mm -hmm. as one of your employees, mm -hmm. let's say you, you have an employee, one employee who falls victim to identity theft can spend up to 700 hours trying to restore their identity and prove that those charges weren't their charges, they, that they don't owe that money. And they owe that money until they can prove they didn't. So now where do you think that those 700 hours are spent? Certainly not at home. Mm -hmm. They're spent normally on the job while the person yeah. is at work, and those are non-productive hours. Fortunately, with the BBB, we have people that are there to help walk them through the process of how to repair or, or prevent, mm -hmm. in, in most cases, we hope, the identity theft. And so you have to think of it as an investment into the community. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the main things. Mm -hmm. from, uh, from strictly an informational standpoint, mm -hmm. consumers are looking for data online. They're looking for who to work with online. Mm -hmm. uh, Nielsen recently did a study that indicated that 83 percent of consumers believe the information they find on BBB.org because they know it's been vetted. Mm -hmm. it's, it's third party independent verification. They also, those same consumers told them that they believed 58 percent of what they found on Angie's list mm -hmm. and they only believed 51 percent of what they found on Yelp mm -hmm. because they understand that those platforms are not necessarily as as vetted mm -hmm. and because people understand that the information is uh, more pure and yeah. is more um, you know, resource rich mm -hmm. on the BBB website. That's great to know because as I said I went to your website and I would never have thought that I would find information on, say, things like scams on, Valenti uh, on mm -hmm. Valentine's Day or how to protect your, your kid's identity. So this is great to know, and I hope that you know listeners uh, or um, people who are watching our show right now, they, they'll go and visit your website, which, again, as I said, it's treasure trove of information. Well, one of the, the things that they can do is if they go to hawaii.bbb.org, in the upper right-hand corner, mm -hmm. there's a little button that says Scam Tracker. Mm -hmm. And on the Scam Tracker, you can click on it, and you can see where all of the scams across the state have been reported in real time. You can do a search to see mm -hmm. if someone else is, has reported of getting a phone call from a certain number or a certain person has come to the door. So it's crowdsourcing of scam information so oh. that you can participate in that and learn from it. Again, that's one of the things that our, our membership and our foundation help to support. That's fantastic. Now, Greg, let's come back to you. Um, how did you join uh, BBB and what's your background? Well, I have a fairly diverse background. Mm -hmm. um, I have a liberal arts degree, which mm -hmm. basically means uh, I was going to go to law school and mm -hmm. wound up not. Okay. Uh, so I have a degree in history and a background in business. Mm -hmm. um, so I've also run nonprofit organizations. Uh, and um, as we had discussed before, I was the executive director at the Atherton YMCA mm -hmm. at UH for a while. Mm -hmm. um, I was also uh, able to work with the Hawaii Nature Center in a, a statewide capacity mm -hmm. as that executive director. Mm -hmm. um, and then I went back into the for-profit world as a um, executive for Fair Horizon Capital mm -hmm. and doing real estate investment for, for that firm. And then as uh, the market began to shift and change, I was looking for a different challenge. Mm -hmm. And um, my predecessor at the BBB was retiring and the board was looking for someone that had both nonprofit and for-profit background to to come in and take a look at the organization and see how the organization could be retooled to better fit the needs of the community. 
And so it was a, a really unique opportunity for me to be able to step into and, and sink my teeth into it. So now you said that you've been at the organization for the last four years. Uh, I'm sure you'll be there for a while, but looking back at those pa past four years, um, what are some of your proud accomplishments? I think the, the proudest accomplishments are the number of staff we were able to maintain during mm -hmm. a period of, of very drastic change. Mm -hmm. um, one of the, the challenges in retooling an organization from scratch is you're inheriting a, a group of people that have worked together in some cases for the better part of 10 to 15 years. Mm -hmm. And you're asking them to rethink mm -hmm. the the, the meaning of their job. In many cases with nonprofits, people begin to believe that the program that they're providing equates to the mission, when in reality your mission is why you exist, and then you deliver a myriad of different programs to achieve that mission. And so as you're moving people from one mindset to the other, mm -hmm. it can be challenging to maintain the staff. But really the proudest accomplishment was maintaining a very good core of the staff that believe in the mission mm -hmm. and are serving our community incredibly well. That's great. Now, looking forward, you mentioned that uh, BBB currently has about 2,500 members. Um, do you have some maybe ambitious goals in terms of trying to grow your membership? It's an interesting question. I, I, um, I had a board member ask me that just last week. Oh, okay. So I, I love this because okay. they, were, they were really surprised when I said that the net number of members that you have in an organization is not an indicator of success. Mm. An indicator of success is are you meeting the needs of the community? Mm -hmm. Are you meeting the needs of the members you have? Mm -hmm. uh, you can look at the financial metrics that right. we're run by and mm -hmm. you can see that over the last four years our budget has, and revenue numbers have grown every year. Mm -hmm. you, you can look at the metrics in terms of the number of people that have left reviews on our website mm -hmm. have skyrocketed mm -hmm. to the point where we now have have served 3,000 percent more pages of reviews this year over last year from people wow. looking at the content and people mm -hmm. visiting the website and becoming more engaged. You can see based on the increase in our public outreach mm -hmm. and the messaging in the community where our you know, when we started out, we had 24 appearances on television in the year before I started. And in the last year, we have 462 media appearances in the calendar year. Mm -hmm. So you look at those metrics mm -hmm. as as success metrics, mm -hmm. not necessarily the number of members. Mm -hmm. Because if your, your metric is simply to bring on more members, mm -hmm. you can decrease the membership cost and drive the membership number That's up. True. Or you can reduce your standards mm -hmm. and bring in more people that are less qualified. Mm -hmm. We're about quality and we're about providing the services the community needs. Mm -hmm. Now, and I agree with what you just said, um, increasing member doesn't necessarily indicate a success. Mm -hmm. But at the end, um, I also know that you're here to serve mm -hmm. the business community, consumers. So if you have more members, that means more of them are in agreement with mm -hmm. your mission. So at the end, I guess that would probably still be a goal. So. It would be a really good goal. I, and I'm, I'm not saying I wouldn't uh -huh. mind having more members uh -huh. and that, that our board would love to see more uh, local businesses agree to abide by our standards. Uh -huh. But the challenge with the BBB is you have to apply for membership. You uh -huh. can't just write a check and become an accredited business. And you're held to standards along the way. So there, there are points where you as a business owner are going to be forced to make a decision about maintaining your accreditation. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's something a lot of people don't think about. They think mm. strictly based on a transactional level, yeah. about what benefit am I going to get back in exchange for my membership dues. Mm -hmm. and. The BBB doesn't operate like that. We're looking to build a community of trustworthy businesses. We want businesses that believe in it. Mm -hmm. and not everyone's going to believe in it. But the more people that we can help understand what we do mm -hmm. and support the mission and subscribe to accreditation as a community promise and a commitment, the more work we can do in the community to, to help educate people. Now, we've talked mostly about your work here, but BBB is actually across the nation. I know that um, Canada has Better mm -hmm. Business Bureau. Could you talk a little bit about that, um, or even uh, around the world? Do we have mm -hmm. Better Business Bureaus in Europe or in Asia? 
So uh, currently, the International Council of Better Business Bureaus mm -hmm. is the master licensee for the Better Business Bureaus uh, around the world. Mm -hmm. And so we currently have Better Business Bureaus in Canada, US, and in Mexico. Mm -hmm. uh, eventually, we'll see BBBs in, in Asia or in Europe. Uh, a lot depends on the community needs. And mm -hmm. is there support from that business community to establish a Better Business Bureau in their community? Mm -hmm. Mexico has recently said there is. So we've mm -hmm. been doing work with the BBB of Mexico to help them look at how we in Hawaii have been successful in working in a, a high tourism market to provide information and content. Mm -hmm. It surprises people to, to hear that we have approximately 23 to 24 percent of our web traffic comes from pre-arrival visitors. It's international oh, traffic of wow. visitors looking at wedding providers, hotels, travel, tourism, anyone that they're about to engage with, uh, they find on our website and they look at the information. And the people that have the BBB accreditation are viewed in a much more favorable light mm. because even international consumers recognize the value of the accredited business seal versus just having a letter grade mm -hmm. on your business profile. That's great to know. Now we're coming to an end to our show, but one, one last question would be, if there's one thing that most people won't know and you would like them to know about uh, Better Business Bureau, what would that be? Uh, I would really like people to um, go online and download our various mobile applications mm -hmm. and, and take a look at the information. It's not your grandfather's BBB anymore, particularly in Hawaii. Uh -huh. We want you to engage with us. Mm -hmm. We want you to feel comfortable about um, engaging with the community. One of the things that, that is different about commerce today than what it has been so much more so in the past is it really is about your reputation and your BBB reputation is the cornerstone of your online reputation. The BBB content and information of our letter grade and the accreditation information not only shows up on BBB.org but it also shows up on Google in terms of the translating the customer experience stars over. Shows up on porch.com, wow. yellowpages.com, home advisor. Uh, we recently signed tri an agreement with trip advisors. So the content and your letter grade and accreditation status is being republished across multiple platforms. So yes. it's from a, a technology standpoint, the Better Business Bureau is on the cutting edge of, of content creation and, and providing various channels as a way for you as a business owner to highlight the fact that you're a trustworthy trading partner. Well, Greg, I certainly have learned a lot and I fully believe that you know you, the website really provides a lot of great information. Great to have you here as our guest today. So thank you so much for coming. Thank you all for having me. Thank you. You've been watching Business in Hawaii, Think Tech Hawaii. Uh, stay tuned for our show next week. I'm Alice Lee Hagen.